Good evening, my friends. I hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to talk about my ThinkPad X20 home server project. It's been about a month since the video that I posted about this project the first time. And back then, I set up a home server based on the ThinkPad X20 motherboard and a docking station. I installed OpenBSD in it and I promised to do an update video. So basically, that's what we're going to do today. An update video. A lot of things have changed since the first video, obviously. I ran a poll on Twitter where I said that I would like to install some Linux distro and a lot of you said Arch, some people said Gentoo, some people said Void, but of course I just went my own way <laughs> and I installed Gentoo. And that might seem like a very counterintuitive solution to some, but I'll explain why. So basically I ditched OpenBSD because First, I want to run a modern file system that supports software RAID, that supports some kind of redundancy, also that has support for checksums that are kept separately from files themselves, also virtual volumes. And of course, I decided to go with ZFS. And once again, the most popular solution at this point will probably be to install FreeBSD, since it has ZFS support by default out of the box. But I really wanted to install Linux because I needed to run some Linux specific tools, which I'm going to talk about a little bit later. So I decided to go with Gentoo because in my experience, Gentoo has the best support uh, for ZFS. It has ZFS packages right in the repositories and it's really easy to install and set up. There's a really cool guide by Monsieur P. Uh, I guess that's how you pronounce it in French. And in this guide, he basically guides you through the installation of Gentoo on ZFS root. It's a very easy to follow, very thorough guide. If you plan to install Gentoo or any other Linux distro, I would highly recommend you to follow this guide. So basically I installed Gentoo and of course having a somewhat powerful computer, a uh, desktop PC, it's Ryzen 2400G. I decided to not compile all the heavy stuff on ThinkPad. Instead what I did is I took the hard drive out and I put it into my Ryzen machine and I just compiled everything. Of course I set the all the necessary flags, Sandy Bridge for the MArch and all the other stuff. I also decided to go with LTO, Link Time Optimizations. It enables optimization level 3 which is mostly not used because it breaks a lot of stuff but there are workarounds and basically majority of packages are compiled with O3, no problem. Also enables, like I said already, link optimizations, graphite, all the cool stuff. I mean, I don't understand what it's all about, but it's supposed to make things go fast. So, you know, I don't mind. So installing, compiling, and setting everything up took me about a day. And afterwards, I just basically took the hard drive out of my Ryzen machine and I put it back into my ThinkPad. I made sure to compile and set up everything on my strong desktop machine so I don't have to compile stuff on this dinosaur of a computer, the i5 Sandy Bridge. I know a lot of people are gonna say it's a perfect computer, but if you tried compiling uh, Gentoo packages on dual core Intel i5 machine from 2011, you would probably agree with me on this one. <laughs> so after setting up the base system, I installed the rest of the stuff. I installed Nextcloud, I installed Plex. This machine is running a Nextcloud instance with a one-time password authentication with a TOTP. Plex is basically another thing I'm running on this machine. It is used to store all my legally downloaded movies and TV shows, which I'm watching in local network. I haven't logged in in my Plex account because I don't have one. I don't actually think it's necessary to create a Plex account to actually use it if you only plan to use it in local network. For my hard drive, I'm using Seagate 750 gigabyte hard drive. It was an old hard drive that my in-laws donated to me and it works pretty well despite 256 smart errors. <laughs> but honestly, I don't mind since I'm not really keeping any critical data on this machine and most of the space on the hard drive is occupied by legally downloaded movies and TV shows which I can you know still legally download even if there's some kind of hard drive failure so I don't mind. Besides ZFS is pretty good at recovering files that were lost due to some hardware issues but of course if you're watching it please don't rely on ZFS only and don't use it as a justification to not 
do any backups. Always do backups. Kind of goes without saying, but just thought I would, I would say it anyway. <laughs> I'm still using my 128GB King John SSD. It's an MSAT SSD, which I'm using as a cache for ZFS. I think it works pretty well. I mean, I haven't noticed any significant advantages or any significant increase in performance when compared to just using hard drive, but, you know, thought I, I can just throw it in here because I don't have a use for it anyway. <laughs> so yeah, I do plan to actually extend my server to maybe, you know, grow it a little bit because 750 gigabytes seems like a lot of space to some people but you grow out of it very fast, especially with that much legally downloaded stuff. I've been looking into those uh, eight terabyte uh, WD drives. Uh, I've heard that you can shuck them. In case you don't know, shucking is basically a procedure where you buy an external hard drive for cheap because they're usually cheaper. And then you take the actual hard drive out of the case. And a lot of the times those are like WD red, which are really good. They're really reliable. And yeah, considering how they're discounted these days, you can get one for like 130 euros here in Germany. Just sounds like a very good deal. And I also plan to invest into an actual home server maybe, like not a laptop motherboard. I'm thinking maybe those mini computers like Intel NUC or maybe Zotac or something like that. They're based on Intel i3 and i5 U. Those don't require any active cooling. They run at about 10 watts, which is really nice for saving electricity, which is expensive here in Germany, by the way. So yeah, that's basically the state of my home server project. Just thought I would share with you guys what I've done, uh, what I'm planning to do. I just hope none of the BSD guys are like disappointed now and just clicking the unsubscribe button and all that. I mean, seriously, I love BSD and OpenBSD in particular but there is not really a good media server solution for OpenBSD as of now. Plex doesn't really exist, like it hasn't been ported yet. Also the file system support on OpenBSD kind of really leaves you wishing for the best. So that's why I decided to go for Linux in this case. Please don't get mad. <laughs> in my next video, I plan to cover ZFS a little bit more. It's actually a really good file system. I'm gonna make a quick tutorial on how to install a Linux instance on ZFS root is going to be void Linux in that case. So I guess that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for sticking around till the end and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.